Hi, this is Gilbert from Digital Creative Designs. Thank you for joining me. Now today I'm going to take you through a retouching workflow where I start off in Adobe Bridge. Uh, usually I'll start off in Lightroom, but this time around I want to tap into Adobe Bridge. Got one of my old catalogs of a pageant of images that I'm going through and uh, there's some of the images that I just reimagined with new kind of technology and my retouching style has improved a bit that's why I'm going back to some of my old images and see how can I improve on them. Now with Lightroom the differences with Lightroom and Bridge is that Bridge is not really a developer to an extent like Lightroom is. Bridge doesn't have the developer capabilities, but it's more centered around metadata, how you assign ratings to it, you know, by making informed decisions on the images that you select to process. In Bridge, you would assign star ratings, you will add like metadata to your images, etc. You'll also do gradings and create collections like you do in Lightroom. So there's not really a huge difference when it comes to its selection and choosing the right images for your selection and, and images you want to process. So they're very similar when it comes to metadata and, and so on. It's just that with uh, Bridge, Bridge, you cannot do primary adjustments like you do, for instance, in Camera Raw and in Lightroom. But Bridge has a few capabilities and attributes that makes it also stand out because it is right in the middle of Adobe's ecosystem. You know, where it can view images from Photoshop, images from Illustrator. You can even view and playback images from After Effects, from Elements, or other applications will be able to have that dynamic link with Adobe Bridge. Now, with Bridge, you can also look at the different layouts like for instance this is the essential panel where it has a preview panel on the side with metadata at the bottom now this preview panel is very intuitive in the sense that you can for instance if i have this three images of this model over here and i can't decide which one so it gives me that capability where i can basically click on the image and magnifier will pop up it's like a little dialog box magnifier it will pop up and you can basically point to the area of interest on your model's face to look at the quality of the image in terms of sharpness is there enough color definition etc is there enough textures to play around well, what's the you know you can get down to pixel level to look at the model skin, etc., and the quality. Okay, you can jump between different images and decide basically which one represents or has enough color definition, tonal information, and metadata for you to work with. It also gives you information like you know when it was shot, the camera that you use, etc. Now this was a studio shoot. And the lighting wasn't really ideal because it did not have a ceiling where I could bounce off some of the lighting, you know, onto the model's face. I couldn't use key three, uh, three point lighting. I couldn't create rim light as well. So I had to position my models at, in such a way where the light that was available is optimized. And there's also a backdrop which was see-through and I couldn't really position them properly. But that's why I want to go back to these images and see if I can enhance them. How you do the grading in Adobe Bridge is that you use your control and number buttons. Um, you know, control one for rating one and so on, control two, control T, uh, three for number three, etc. And that's just what I've done here. Now on this filter panel here, you will see various kinds of filter parameters that you can choose. Now, for instance, of used thus far three categories for my rating scale three star up to five star and this is the capabilities of bridge it's the same in, as in lightroom where you can also do the same now with bridge it's just that it is 
differently presented and I feel it's more accessible in this way where you can look at dates for instance you can look at metadata that you've entered you know uh, at the time of taking the images and also whatever you've assigned in Lightroom it will also come in here right so I'm looking at my four stars and these are the images that I want to process so I need to choose one now I also need to mention that the only developing capabilities, I won't really call it developing capabilities, but one quality or attribute that stands out for me in Bridge is where you can do batch renaming of your images. Okay, you for instance choose your images, you'll go to tools and the your first option under tools will be batch rename. So you can click on it and assign, you know, whatever. You want to put in the text field which is a nice uh, touch to bridge you can also look at the various layouts this is the essential panel okay which um, I digress I wanted to show you all the layouts and then this is the library panel okay you can also if you connect if you have a, a cloud account you can also drop some of your images into your cloud uh, library this is a film strip now this is more synonymous with what you'll see in Lightroom where you select your images at the bottom and you present it with a preview on the top and this is the output module now this is more your reminds me of your photo book where you need to create a photo book or stuff for print this is the output module for that where it has, has output settings etc but I won't go into that and this here next to output is your metadata panel now these images are now in list view with metadata you know listed on the on the right of it if it's too small you can then change to tile view and it's also another brilliant way of presenting it to you. i think with these it's this would for instance be your loop view in lightroom that you'll use obviously without the developing capabilities Okay, and then the workspace next to metadata space, workspace adds uh, keywords. Now these are keywords that you've assigned, you know. You can, for instance, put in keywords like, you know, if it's a wedding, it's a pageant, what's the occasion, what camera you used. If there's any keywords for you to associate with that image, you can then punch it, punch it in here and it will, you know, come up as a filter option for your images but I think you know I'll settle for the essential view I think it works for me and then uh, if I can show you you have your metadata tab over there and then your keyword packed over there keyword tab over here and this is where you can assign like wedding graduation all the keywords that you've you know entered now the other thing that Adobe Bridge has is that you can for instance take some of the actions that you've created in Photoshop and you can assign that on a batch processing level within Adobe Bridge where it will batch process all the properties and settings and actions that you've developed in Photoshop and assign it to multiple images in Bridge. Now I'm not going to show you that but it's just I thought it was just one of the capabilities I should uh, mention that Adobe Bridge stands out. Okay, so once I'm happy with my selection, I usually look at the sharpness of my images. And if I'm happy, I'll then go and uh, look. For now, I'm just going to uh, edit and process one image. But you can select multiple images, open it as a stack or open it as separate layers within Photoshop. Right, so I think yeah, that's the most important stuff I use Bridge for. It's basically just to help me make good selections. If I'm happy with that, I'll then click on Open. I'll be presented with Adobe Camera Raw. I think it's a nice touch, right? Now, this is where the development and the primary processing comes in. You know, if you need to compare that with Lightroom. It, it fits in between Adobe Bridge and Photoshop. And then Photoshop is where you make your final masterpiece 
on your image, so to speak. And bridge is where you can do your colors, your exposures, etc., your shadows. You can work with your dynamic range, elective color, everything that you see within the Lightroom panel. It is listed on your right hand side in Adobe Camera Raw. Now, one thing that I need to mention is that at the bottom of Camera Raw, because it's a raw processor, there's an indicator. Um, at the bottom it will show if your image will be processed as an 8-bit or a 16-bit. Now always make sure that your images are 16-bit because it just has more color information of the image. It is a color profile or an image profile that has got much more information and color gambit. Okay, it got trillions and trillions of colors compared to 8-bit it doesn't have that much but it's still a usable image and most images on the internet are 8-bit right so it's not that it's bad it's just that when you do a lot of processing right it will fall apart you'll see banding happening you see you'll see pixelization etc on an 8-bit image so always make sure that you process your images using an 8-bit now I have pre-selected this image and I've selected, you know, I've clicked on it on the options and then I was presented with the camera raw preference panel and then this is where you go to select between 8-bit and 16-bit. So always make sure you work on 16-bit images. Now for this one, I've made pre-selections and pre-edits here. You know, I bumped up my shadows a bit. I opened up model's face a bit you know I'll decrease the highlights I also worked on the tone to warm it up slightly because the lighting was a bit bad and on the dark side and it was also a color tone a color cast of blue over the face I also removed that by warming it up a little bit I also went into curves but in curves I worked with the primary colors you know I also bore in mind that there are opposite colors like for instance uh, the opposite of red is cyan the opposite of green is magenta and the opposite of blue is yellow so i work within the spectrum of opposite colors that you'll find in any image for the blue i had to pull away from blue by going to yellow and then it started getting red so i pulled away from red to introduce a little bit of cyan as a color and so on that's i think it's quite nifty um, and then you can with your second tab you can go to details make your image a little bit sharper you can also if it's too sharp you know get rid of the noise in the image etc it has got your color mixer so this is everything if you're familiar with lightroom you'll be completely at home in camera raw if you look at the right hand side panel okay it also have your radial and your graduated filter it will also have a graduated filter a radial filter and so on also red eye removal that you can use but i'm not going to spend too much time in camera raw at your grading panel optics correction where you choose your lens profiles and also your chromatic aberration removal it's also the geometry that's to correct your perspective for your images it's also got this vignetting that you can use etc and also your calibration where you need to do split toning if you want to do split toning and so on so yes that's camera raw it's it's quite a a very intu intuitive um, raw processor and um, very helpful especially if you don't want to you know start off in lightroom this is where you'll basically start if you only use photoshop okay so i'm happy with that so thank you for joining me that was my overview of adobe bridge and how i incorporate it into my workflow to save time by doing effective selections and informed decisions when it comes to the images that I process are also taken you through uh, Adobe Camera Raw and how it is nearly similar to Adobe Lightroom. I hope you found my video very informative. 
please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for more videos like these. So I'll see you in my next video.